Hi, I'm John Maxwell. I'm very excited for us to have a few minutes together so I can talk to you about Equip. You see, in the last several years, Equip has trained five million leaders in every nation. It was a tremendous accomplishment and I'm proud to be a part of it and many of you were also. But we have a new goal, a fresh goal. We wanna take those five million trained leaders and help them to become transformational leaders. What's a transformational leader look like? Gandhi, who was a transformational leader in India, said, be the change you wish to see in the world. In other words, we are to be changed to bring change. I've learned many years ago that we teach what we know, but we really reproduce who we are. And it's impossible for you or me to, to give to others what we do not possess ourselves. In the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, I talk about the law of magnetism. Basically, that law says who you are is who you attract. So if you are transformational in your leadership, you begin to attract and bring other people to transformation. My good friend Jim Collins and I were talking together one day, having a long lunch, and he studied transformational movements probably more than any person in America. And he was sharing with me that day that transformational movements require transformational leaders. And that's what this is all about. Equip has gone from a training organization where we just train leaders to know what to do to a transformational organization where they live out those changes and there becomes a dynamic that allows other people to have their life incredibly, beautifully changed. Now the foundation for being a transformational leader is in Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Let me give you biblical thoughts on transformation. First of all, God uses average people. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, remember our message is not about ourselves. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the Master. All we are is messengers, errand runners from Jesus for you. It started when God said, light up the darkness. And our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ, all bright and beautiful. If you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary life. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. In other words, basically that passage says that God uses us in ordinary people. He basically we're crackpots, okay? But we have this incredible message within us. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why does God use average people? The answer is because he wants to receive the credit. So when we talk about being transformational, I want you to understand that God uses average people to have their life transformed so that they can turn around and be transformational in their message in their life to others. And he uses you and me average people. When I get to heaven, I've got a whole list of questions I want to ask God, but one of them is, why did you choose people? And, and another one is probably, why did you choose the people that you choose? I don't know. I don't understand that, but here's what I do know. God chose you and God chose me, average people, to have our lives changed so that we can help be a catalyst for the life change of others. God uses average people. So, the second thing I want you to know about transformation is that you and I are to give our average life to God. 
So let's go back to that Romans 12 passage, verse one. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. Stop here. Raise your hand if you have an everyday, ordinary life. I'm raising mine. That's most of us. That's just the kind of life that we live. He said, he wants to even define what ordinary life is. He said, you're sleeping, you're eating, going to work, walking around life. That's us. And what do we do? We place it before God as an offering. Now, when we place ourselves before God, we ask three things. We ask to be broken. Why? So that, so that we can care. You see, God breaks us in the right places. And transformational leaders, they not only have a vision that is clear, but they carry the weight of the vision. And that weight that they carry of the vision, that, that brokenness, is what brings longevity and integrity to that vision. Without that weight, without that brokenness, we see clearly, but we don't have the gravitas to allow that vision to mature and develop. But not only are we to place ourselves before him as an offering and, and let him break us, secondly, we are to be empty. Why? So we can be filled. Just like John the Baptist who said, uh, he must increase, speaking of Jesus, and I must decrease. In other words, we are to have what I call God room, a place where we ask God to come and do for us more than what we can do for ourselves. Every year I ask God to give me a phrase or words, and this year it is God room, which basically means that I'm to believe God to have room in my life to do exceeding abundantly more than I can ask or think. In other words, let God only do what God can only do. It's beyond me. It's beyond you. If we're going to be transformational, it has to be more than just what our ordinary lives can present. It has to be God. So we say, break us, help us to become empty so that you can fill us. And thirdly, make me lonely so that I can be dependent upon you. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And when I was a young leader, I didn't understand that passage because I could give God a whole list of things I was doing. And to be honest with you, I didn't need him. I could, I, I could, I could work hard. I could go visit people. I could do several things. And one day I was wrestling with God on that. And I'm saying, I, I'm not quite sure I understand, Jesus. Without you, I can do nothing. There's a lot of things I can do. And it seemed like at that moment he spoke to my heart and said, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do, John. But there's nothing you can do that has eternal consequences to it unless I touch it. And transformational leadership is not mundane. It's not just for the moment. It's big and it's eternal. So what does it mean for us to give our average lives to God? Well, it means, number one, that I'm going to embrace, you're going to embrace the win-win relationship with God. Back to Romans 12, 1. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your ordinary everyday life. That's ours. Sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life. Place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Now, this phrase, embracing what God does for you, what, what does that mean? It means that we embrace the fact that God has accepted our offering. He takes our brokenness and he gives us compassion. He takes our em emptiness and he fills us with himself. He takes our loneliness and replaces it with his presence. And a result, a win-win relationship. Until I realize without God, I cannot, but without me, he will not. What an amazing partnership. A sovereign God has chosen to use me, to use you, to partner with these average people to become transformational. But only as I ask to be broken, empty, and lonely does this win-win relationship work. And that's why the phrase, keep making me, is our continual prayer. God, keep making me this way. Because the tendency for Maxwell, perhaps the tendency for you, is for me to make myself. And when I make myself, it's way too much of me and not near enough of God. One of my favorite passages of Scripture is Jeremiah 9, 23. 
Don't let the wise brag on their wisdom and don't let the heroes brag on their exploits. Don't let the rich brag of their riches. If you brag, brag of this and this only, that you understand and know me. So let's review. What does it mean for us to give our average lives to God? Well, first of all, we embrace this win-win relationship with him. Secondly, we focus on God instead of our culture. The scripture says in Romans 12 too, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. What does it mean to fix our attention on God? Simple. We see things from God's perspective. You see, our natural tendency is to focus on ourselves and our own culture, and that's okay, it's called being human. I've done that, you've done that. It's easy for us to be kind of dragged into that process. And what I love about God is that He understands us and He loves us in spite of our humanness and gives us this incredible unconditional love. However, when we focus too much on ourselves, what happens is we become fearful. It's happened to the best of God's saints. In fact, in the scriptures, 365 times, literally one time for every day of the year, is the phrase, fear not. And, and why is the phrase, fear not, continually repeated in the scriptures? <laughs> because we're human and, and we're afraid. But when you look at the greatest men and women in the Bible, God understood their humanness and said, the task I have for you is bigger than you and you're fearful about it. So he would constantly say, don't be afraid. That's what God told Abraham. He said, do not be afraid. He told Isaac, do not be afraid. Jacob, do not be afraid. Three times with Moses on different occasions, Moses, don't be afraid. Also three times with Joshua, don't be afraid. I think perhaps those two, he told more not to be afraid because they were leaders. And when you're leading people and trying to bring transformation, there's a tendency to see the unstableness of people and begin to fear. Not in the fact that you do not know who you are, but because you're not sure who always they are. He told Elijah, don't be afraid. Ezekiel, don't be afraid. Jeremiah, don't be afraid. Daniel, don't be afraid. On 10 occasions, Jesus told his disciples, don't be afraid. And he was with them physically. Twice he told Paul, don't be afraid. I think why that message is so important for us if we're going to be transformational is this. To bring transformation into a life is a beautiful thing. But when you and I think about being leaders and transforming our families, our communities, maybe our cities, perhaps our nations, when we begin to think of transforming a large group of people, to be honest with you, the odds are quite low. And the tendency is for us to see all of the problems and begin to say, wow, I, I don't think that can happen. And to begin looking at ourselves and our humanness and begin to withdraw and begin to be fearful. So I want you to know what we're trying to accomplish through Equip of transforming you as leaders so that you can transform your family, your community, your city, your region, your country. Those are very, very difficult task. That's, we've got low odds of accomplishing that, but I want you to be encouraged because we as leaders are tackling something bigger than ourselves. And Jesus has great words of encouragement. What did he say? You're tied down, you and I were tied down to the mundane, I'm in touch, with what is beyond your horizons. You live in terms of what you see and touch. I'm living in other terms. Jesus looked at fishermen and believed that they could be leaders. Jesus looked at Zacchaeus and believed that he could become honest. Jesus looked at Lazarus and believed that he could be raised. Jesus looked at the Samaritan woman and believed that she had value. Jesus looked at the sick and believed that they could be healed. And Jesus looked at the thief and believed that he could be forgiven. Transformational leaders believe that God will help them make a difference in their culture. And the result of that is they have a faith that can make a difference and they have the courage to do it. So transformational leadership tackles difficult situations, but they have a God perspective. So let's review. 
What does it mean when we take our average lives and give them to God? It means that we embrace that win-win relationship with Him, that we focus on God instead of our culture, and three, that God will transform us from the inside out. That's what Romans 12, 2 says. It says, you and I will be changed from the inside out. You see, culture focuses on the outside, but God focuses on the inside. After I received Christ as a teenager, the first verse that spoke deeply to my heart was 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things become new. I can still remember as a teenager, all of a sudden understanding that I was changed on the inside, that everything was going to become new, that I was a new creation. You see, God and culture, wow, opposite. You see, culture stresses the outside. But God wants you and me to be bigger on the inside. That's why Jesus taught that if you want to save your life, what do you do? You have to lose it. If I want to be lifted up, I have to humble myself. If I want to be the greatest, I have to be a servant. If I want to be first, I have to be last. Basically, he was saying, get the inside right, and then you can begin to transform the outside. So now let's review. What does it mean for us to give our average lives to God? Well, we embrace that win-win relationship with Him. We focus on God instead of our culture. God then begins to transform us from the inside out. And number four, we will sense God's desires and do them. Back to Romans 12 too. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Readily recognize, quickly respond. I was sitting down just the other day and having dinner with my friend Chris Hodges and we were talking about the passage in Psalm 37, four that says to take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And what Chris was sharing with me was so rich, I wanna pass it on to you for a moment. He said, John, God doesn't give us what we want. He gives us the desires to want what he wants. I believe that with all of my heart. In fact, that's why in the last 18 months, I've gone from a, a talking prayer life to a listening prayer life. I just happen to believe that God's agenda is better than mine and bigger than mine and more important than mine. And, and so I kind of tried to place myself as a transformational leader in not giving God what I think he wants to do for me, but just listening from God asking him to change me from the inside out. So let's review again. What does it mean for us to give our average lives to God? Well, first of all, we embrace the win-win relationship with him. We focus on God instead of our culture. Then God begins to transform us from the inside out. And then we sense God's desires and we do them. Now, this is where it gets exciting. This is where transformational leadership comes alive. I don't want you to miss this. To miss this is to miss transformational leadership. The fifth thing that happens when we give our average life to God is that he lifts us above our culture so we can lift our culture. Romans 12, 2. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of maturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. You see, I guess we have a choice. We have a choice to be formed by our culture, be like them, drown in that culture and basically let them pull us down, or to be transformational and allow God to lift us above that culture, which now allows us to lift our culture. You see, transformational leaders intentionally use their lives every day to bring about positive change in the lives of others. That's what a transformational leader does. He or she looks around family, community, city, region, country, and ask a question, God, how can I lift up the people around me? How can I add value to the people around me? They are intentional 
in making a positive difference in the lives of others. Let me stop for a moment and ask you a question. How intentional are you in just making a beautiful life change for other people around you? Uh, could you just give a long list of people who would look at you and say, my life is better because of you? I found God because of you. I, I now have better values because of you. Now here's what's exciting. When we began to look at being a transformational leader, intentionally adding value to other people in such a way that it makes a positive difference in our life, the tendency for you, the tendency for me to say, this is a big task. Am I up for it? Well, the answer is not from John Maxwell's lips. The answer for you are from the lips of Jesus himself. Here's what he said in John 14. The person who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things, because I am on the way to my Father and giving you the same work that I've been doing. You can count on it. From now on, whatever you request along the lines of who I am and what I'm doing, I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for who he is in the Son. I mean it. Whatever you request in this way, I'll do. Well, you know the story of the disciples filled with the Holy Spirit. New church is birthed. Acts chapter 4, verse 13, that when they began to see all the amazing things, all the transformational works and behavior that was happening around them, they looked and they saw the courage of Peter and John. And when they saw this amazing transformational courage, they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. And they were astonished. In other words, they couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. How could these unschooled, ordinary people be doing these amazing transformational things? And then they took note that these were the men who had been with Jesus. And when you become transformational, People no longer look at your life. They look at what God has done in your life. For a year, I studied the book of Acts. I read the entire book every day. And I kept asking myself this one simple question. What was it in the book of Acts that made these men and women so incredibly effective? I came to the conclusion that they lived beyond their means. They were average, ordinary people, but they were filled with God's Holy Spirit and they were transformational in, in their life, in their words, in their behavior. And they attempted things that were so great, so beyond them, that only God could get the credit. Remember, we began this lesson by saying, why does God use average people and make them transformational agents? It's very simple. So he can get the credit. When Equip began many, many years ago, I went to Coda. India, place in northern India uh, where a lot of persecution goes on. And I can remember uh, landing there and having Tim Elmore, one of my associates, who had already been teaching and training about 3,000 leaders there for a day and a half. He met me and he said, John, uh, this is going to be a difficult challenge. The, these leaders are, are not well educated and, and they don't have a, any kind of foundation of leadership. And he said, I just want you to kind of get prepared. This is this is going to probably be a, a difficult couple days. Well, I remember walking into this large arena, and the first thing I saw was a martyr board with people's names who had, in that year, died for their faith. And I sat down on a bench and I wept, and I thought, who am I to teach these beautiful people anything? Because their commitment to God is so much greater than mine. I could remember teaching all day, and, and they did not have a great understanding of leadership. And that night, I spent the night in prayer, didn't sleep much. And I began to ask God, how was I going to help them go to the level they needed to go to, to be the leaders, the spiritual men and women that they needed to be to transform their communities? It was during the night that God shared with me that the next day I was to pray over them and ask God to give them a spiritual gift of leadership. I'll never forget that next morning as I closed the conference and shared with them that 
that I felt that God wanted to do something special for them. He wanted to make them transformational. And I would like to pray over them and ask God to give them a spiritual gift of leadership. And I asked them if they wanted to have that for them to stand. And much to my surprise, they all stood. In fact, I thought they misunderstood me, so I set them back down. And I said, this is only for men and women who really want God to give them a spiritual gift of leadership, really want to be transformational. And again, I asked them if they wanted that to stand, and they all stood. And then I realized every one of those people, precious, beautiful people, many who had traveled four or five days to get to this conference. What they really wanted was God to do something for them they couldn't do for themselves. And so that day, I prayed over them. And literally, I watched hundreds and hundreds of men and women receive the spiritual gift of leadership. Now, in a moment, I'm going to do that with you also. I received a letter recently from a wonderful friend of mine, Vern Brewer, who was over those churches and those pastors in Kota, India. And this letter was so beautiful, I pass it on to you. He said, John, as I reflect back at that Equip conference in Kota in November of 1997, it was the catalyst that ignited a fire in many brave young church planters to go into unreached villages in India and Nepal to plant churches where no churches exist. Since that conference, those pastors, those pastors that received a spiritual gift of leadership, those pastors that asked God to transform them so they could be transformational leaders, since that conference, those pastors have planted 13,700 churches resulting into 1.3 million new Christ followers. And what God did for us there, he wants to do for you in your country. In fact, uh, I have a transformational verse, I think, that belongs to Equip. It's out of Isaiah chapter 60, verses 2 and 3. Other nations will be covered by darkness, but on you, the light of the Lord will shine. The brightness of his presence will be with you. Nations will be drawn to your light and kings to the dawning of your new day. Her name is Gabby, and she's an average lady. She came to one of my conferences, and uh, she listened to me challenge the people to become transformational in their leadership, to go back to their country and make a difference. As she came up to me after the conference, she had her passport with her, and she handed it to me, and she said, would you write, uh, would you write something in my passport? Well, this was my first introduction to Gabby. I didn't know her. I just wrote one word, transformation, and handed it back to her. She took her passport and looked at that word transformation, and she said, God, I want you to make me a transformational leader for my country. She went back and shared this story with her husband, Tim, and he asked her what she was going to do. And basically, she said, I'm going to try to bring transformation in my country, Paraguay. She came to the next conference that I was speaking that she could attend, and she brought one of the John Maxwell Leadership Bibles up to, her, up to me, and she asked me to, to sign it for her. And I did, and she also brought my book, Intentional Living, and asked me to sign it for the president of Paraguay. And so she gave me his name and I signed it and, and wrote him a note and signed my name. And I handed the Intentional Living book back to her and I said, oh, Gabby, do you know the president of Paraguay? No, she said, I don't, but I'm going to meet him. I said, that's wonderful. Uh, you've already got the meeting set up? No, she said, I don't. But I believe God wants me to be a transformational leader in Paraguay, and I believe he wants to transform my country, and I believe he's going to open those doors. And she took the intentional living book with the president's name sign, went back to Paraguay, shared with her husband. They prayed, and God opened the door. And within a few weeks, she met the president, gave him the book, and some of the people that were around him in his cabinet began to hear that we would be willing to come and teach them leadership values and help them with transformation. Now, let me make a long story short. Transformation is happening now in Paraguay. Literally, 
75,000 people have been trained in round tables. They are now looking at within the next 12 months, another quarter million people that will go through leadership round tables and will learn how to have a connection with God and how to have better values and how to live an intentional life. And it's all because of a young lady named Gabby. It's a beautiful story, can't explain it. It's a God story. So I have a question as I close with you. Who in this group right now today will be the next Gabby for her country? Who will step out and say, I'm going to become a transformational leader and I want to receive a spiritual gift of leadership so that I can make a difference with my family, in my community, in my region, and yes, even my country. That's what transformational leadership is all about. Average people like you, me, Gabby, allowing God to work in our hearts until we're able to bring transformation to our family, to our community, to our region, and maybe even to our country. You see, EQUIP is all about now raising up men and women that understand that they can have faith and be filled with the Holy Spirit to allow God to do for them what they cannot do for themselves, which will make a positive difference in their world. That's where we're going. That's who we are. That's what we want, transformational leadership in your life and in my life.